Well, we're finally gonna start the body work on the 71 Honda CL350 Scrambler. I'll show you all the roughness here. It looks like the bike has been wrecked pretty bad and somebody has stud gunned this out. There's also a big booger weld right here. So I'm gonna have to grind that down, maybe do some more body work to this over here. But uh, I'm gonna start with taking these emblems off. I should have videoed me taking the tank off the bike, I guess, but didn't think about it at the time. I've also got a new uh, pet cock since this one, the reserve function on it was messed up if you guys watched the other videos of the bike. I love these old emblems. The uh, white lettering and stuff looks really cool. You can probably tell I'm at my work. Don't tell my boss. Let's see what this fuel looks like. Well, we cleaned this tank out and we've been riding this bike, so it should be pretty clean. But it'll, it'll be good to uh, let it drain out what's in it. We'll just put fresh fuel back in it. Well, no surprises there with the fuel that was in it. It looked pretty clean. Looked like me and Ralphie did a good job cleaning it out the first time. I'm gonna go ahead with uh, this thing right here. I think I think they call it an abrasive disc, but uh, it strips the paint off without messing up the metal. Uh, I'm gonna start with that, and we'll probably find some factory orange paint under here somewhere. Well, there wasn't really any orange paint under there, just around maybe the edges here. So someone had already done this, you know, years ago probably. Um, I did see quite a bit of rust pitting in there that um, was underneath the primer. So like that right there. So it's a good thing we stripped this. You always want to strip whatever's on there off if it's been messed with before because you don't know how good of a job the person before you did. Um, you know, there's liable to be rust under it. Pretty much every time I've ever done this, I've found rust underneath someone else's primer. But we're gonna have to do some metal work now. I'm not really sure how much I can do because the only resource I have available to me is to do uh, like a weld on a stud gun pin and pull it. And uh, I'm not sure how much you can do with that on a gas tank. I'm not sure why somebody didn't grind this down when they did it, but they didn't. So now I'm gonna try to weld these stud gun pins right here to uh, try to pull these dents out without blowing myself up. One tip with using this is you always want to pull on the tool. Pull back this way while you're using it because if you let it just limp, it'll slip off the stud. Uh, that'll help you a lot. Also, you'll see people cut these pins off like out here. If you get behind the pin like this, squeeze real tight and twist it, it'll pop off clean. Save you a bunch of time on grinding. Well, that one came out pretty good there. This came out nicely. Over here, man, this thing, it even creased it. I don't know if you can tell, it creased it right there. Somebody probably got real hurt on this thing at some point, but probably not a ton I can do here. At some point, this is just gonna turn into cave it and pave it over here. We got some high spots we gotta beat down. If this was a, a panel that I could get to the back side of with a dolly, I would heat these up with a torch and hammer and dolly them flat and then cool them off with air or water and shrink the metal up because this metal is very stretched but this one being a gas tank and i can't get to the inside uh it's probably going to get caved and paved Well, 
we got the caving part done now it's time to pave it and uh if you're not familiar with bondo my auto body teacher taught me if you can make a line across it like this that's about the right amount of hardener and you don't want to stir it you want to like fold it over itself so you don't get too many air bubbles Well, there you go. I've got it all bondoed up. I just went ahead and coated the whole thing because it had some ripples up through here and some ripples in here. And as small as it is, you might as well just go ahead and coat the whole thing. We're gonna knock this down with 80 grit now and try to get the shape out of it. We'll probably have to coat it a couple times though. So I just got the basic shape of it here with 80 grit on DA. And now I'm gonna to go to 80 grit on a sanding block to try to get it actually flat or you know the shape it's actually supposed to be. So this is what it looks like after I went over it with 80 grit. You can see some of the low places in it. And now, since all this is really minor pinholes and stuff, I'm gonna put a coat of putty over it. And we're gonna start with 80 grit and then work our way to 180 before we prime the Same thing here with the hardener. This putty is just much thinner than the Bondo. It's made to fill in really minor imperfections. So, now that we've got it knocked down with 80 grit off of a six inch DA, I wanna mist some trim black over it and then we're gonna block it with 180 on a uh, sanding block. This is gonna show us where our 80 grit scratches are to know when we've got them all out and are ready to prime. So this is the advantage of spraying the guide coat on there uh, is that it shows up all your low places and all your sand scratches that you haven't sanded out yet. So when all this is gone, uh, that's when you know the 180 has taken out all the 80 grit scratches and you've blocked out all your low spots. So here's a really good shot at the 80 grit scratches from the uh, the DA that we're getting rid of here with our 180 on a sanding block. Because you do not want to prime over 80 grit scratches. I promise they'll show back up to haunt you. Well, there it is. I got it all blocked down with 180. Uh, looks pretty good, pretty smooth. There's a little ding right here I missed. And there's a little bitty spot right here I'm gonna have to fill in around the the uh, pickcock outlet, I'm gonna do those now. I'm always afraid I'm gonna break this thing. I'm trying to pull on these. There we go. I'm gonna start working on this side cover while that's drying. This is the one that has the burnt spot in it. I'm gonna try to pick these off here and I'm, I'm gonna say they're gonna break. Very rusty. Oh, there we go. Maybe I can find some sort of replacement clip to hold this in. Oh. There we go, got our emblem off there. That way we can do the work to this. You don't ever want to tape stuff up like that. You want to take everything off that you possibly can or it'll make a much better job. This thing right here looks like it's in worse shape than my toenails are. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to mess this thing up. I don't know where I would ever find another one. There we go. Probably never ever get that back in there. I'll regret this for the rest of my life. I got 180 on a three inch CA. We're going to start sanding this thing. <laughs> sanded out surprisingly all these little chips and stuff i had in here we just sanded it all down 180 
I believe this thing is ready for primer. Well, I think we've got it ready now. Um, <laughs> I think we got them ready to primer now. But we got them all sanded down 180. Got all the pinholes filled in on the tank. All the scratches out of that thing, except for the ones I just caused. So let's prime this. So here's what I use, a P30W primer. I'm gonna use the US2 reducer and H38 hardener. Four parts of this, one part and one. So I wanna give this about 50% overlap. That's what I try to do. Okay, I think we're done here. I put, and that put about four coats on it. They usually recommend to put three coats, but you know, give her one for the road. Well, we gave it a chance to dry now. And here it is, the primer's all dry. Now the slower the reducer you put in it, the shinier it's gonna be. If I were to use like the AS8 reducer, this would have been more flat in texture, but it looks really shiny because of the, the uh, slower reducer I put in it. A little rump pipe. Tiny Tim over there. Well, I'm back at the house now. I'm just working on this body work when I can at work, if you probably already could tell that. I'm gonna take the headlight bucket off and try to get the other side cover off this thing so we can take it in and do the body work to it now. Is this what holds this together? I don't know. I have no idea. Never took one of these off before. We're gonna find out together. Maybe I did it right. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh, look at all the wiring in there. Looks like spaghetti. Oh my gosh, I did not expect this much wiring to be in here. Oh no, my wife's family's been in here. So I guess this green wire come out of that green one there. It looks pretty straightforward. Blue, blue, green, green, white, white. So how do we pull all those wires through there? <laughs> 10 pounds of wire through a five pound hole here. This reminds me of a bathroom mowing I've had before, but we probably don't need to get into that. I'll get demonetized. Well, sweet baby Jesus in the manger, that took way too long. Wow. That thing's a little bit beat up. It'd be good to put an LED light in this while I uh, have it off, or as my daughter calls it, LED lights. I'm not sure if we can get this off with the exhaust on here. We might be able to sneak it off here, but I'm pretty sure this may be a CB side cover, honestly. There you go, there's that one. Oh man, that is scary. Well, we couldn't get it off there with the exhaust up against it tight, so gotta take this exhaust back loose. We just did this in the last video. I'm gonna be real nervous trying to put this thing back on when it's painted without hurting it. Man, what a job. Well, we're at work now with this thing. I'm gonna do the same thing I did the last one and get these clips off here, pop this emblem out. Oh, okay, that didn't work out too good, did it? This one's more fragile than the last one was. I'm working on the other one. It seems like the grommet really needs to go out this direction. It's smaller on this side than it is the other side. Got it. Just peel my fingernail back. That's all. All right. Now that we got this all stripped down, I'm going to sand this with 180. <laughs> I like to go back over everything with a, a red scotch brite because the sandpaper, you know, it's not as soft and, you know, curvable as this is to get in all the little spots. I always go over everything with a red scotch brite before I prime it. We got a couple little chips here and there. I'm gonna have to sand a little bit more on this to get out like right there. I think we got this ready to go now. 
It's all sanded down with 180 and a red scotch right, and I believe we're ready for primer on this piece. Let's move on to the headlock. Well, this thing's in pretty rough condition, especially around the lip right here. It's pretty beat up all over. We're gonna have to put some putty on this one. Look how much the sun faded this thing out. This thing must have really sat outside for a long time. First things first, I'm not gonna struggle as much putting this wiring back in. Somebody had already been reaming on that hole there, but we got our make everything fit drill bit and punched it out just one size bigger. So hopefully that'll be, make it a little bit easier to get that wiring back through there. Now I'm gonna sand all this with 180 and then we're probably gonna have to put some putty on a bunch of different chips and scratches on this thing. Let's get some putty on these scratches we got here. We got a bunch of scratches along the edge here. Well, I think I got everything covered there. That thing was a little chewed up, but uh, once this dries, we'll knock this down with 180 and have it ready to prime too. It's actually been about two days worth of Vainas and RC Colas since we uh, primered this. So it's had time to dry now. I'm gonna hit it with a trim black as a guide coat. And I'm gonna knock this down with 180 again, just to get any imperfections out of it. And we will reprime the tank when we uh, prime the headlight bucket and the side covers to plan. Just like before, let's get the sanding on this thing. Especially on this white with a black guide coat it really shows up the places that you haven't sanded enough yet and uh it's easy for anybody to tell where their low spots are i got it all blocked down with 180. you can see we kind of sand it through in some spots down to the bondo but I got it all blocked down with 180 everywhere, hand sanded the edges to make them nice and smooth. And then uh, I used that red scotch right around. So this is ready to reprime. I didn't see any, you know, pinholes or sand scratches we need to fill in. So we'll just reprime this and uh, it'll be ready to sand down and paint them. So we got it all sanded down. You can see exactly where the putty stayed and all the low spots there all our chips and things, so this should be ready to primer. Well, there it is, we got it primered. Now I primed this with a, a faster reducer, the AS8 reducer, so that's why it doesn't look quite as glossy as it did with the, the last coat of primer, but we should be able to sand this stuff down now once it dries, and uh, we'll probably sand it with 320 and then go back over with 600, and it'll be ready to paint. Well, we're back at the house now with the bike, obviously, and we're gonna let that stuff that I primered at work sit and dry for a few days. But in the meantime, I bought some new sprockets for it, and, uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna put both of them on now. I'm for sure gonna put this front one on. So this is an 18 tooth front sprocket and I got a brand new chain for it. And depending on how I feel, I may actually just go ahead and change this one at the same time. Uh, I'm just a little bit worried it might be too high of a gear because this is 18 and 34 and I don't want it to be like impossible to take off uh, from a dead stop, but we'll see how it goes. Before I get started on the sprockets though, I am going to drain the front oil in these uh, front shocks because, uh, you know, we got clearance issues here. And I don't know how much the shock oil plays into the ride height of the front, but uh, we're going to find out. Well, maybe it doesn't have any oil. <clears throat> wow, that was really tight. Looks like we're getting a little bit of oil now uh, out of there. Looks uh, like there's a little bit of water in it though too, doesn't it? Yeah, looks like the front forks blew the head gasket.
I feel like we were just in here doing this, weren't we? Weren't we doing this on the last video? Should have brought a sprocket sooner, you know? I'm used to changing like a ring and pinion gear in a car. And man, that's a, a lot more work than uh, this appears to be. Just changing the sprocket out, at least. I think so. Well, for the first time, we're gonna take the exhaust all the way off this thing. Yeah, that's a little easier to get to now. Hopefully this thing will fit in there. It looks like it might be awfully close to this front pin here. Work with me here. There we go. Kinda like how a, a camshaft retaining plate is. So here's our old 16 tooth and here's our 18 tooth. If we leave the 39 tooth rear sprocket on it, this will go from like a 243 gear to a 216 gear. Uh, and if I put this on it, it would put it all the way up to a 188, I believe. So. I think what I'm gonna do for now is just change the front sprocket. And because going to a higher gear in the rear makes us smaller, uh, there's a possibility that if I cut the chain to fit this and then it's too high of a gear, then I may not be able to use that same chain with a 39 tooth sprocket if I want to go back. So I'm gonna go with the uh, two extra teeth in the front and see how that goes. And that way uh, the chain will be a, you know, a little long because it's a 39 tooth sprocket. If I want to change this, I might just have to take a link out of it and I haven't wasted the chain. It just barely fits in there uh, beside that pin, doesn't it? Hopefully our chain will have room enough too. Okay, so we found the master link here. I'm gonna pop this uh, master link out so we can take the old chain off here. If any of you guys are wondering why uh, Rocky or Ralphie is not out here right now, or, you know, Wawa or somebody, it's because it's like 6 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, so uh, I'm the only one awake right now. Yeah, basically, if uh, the sun's not out, Rocky's piled up in the barn with about eight girlfriends uh, taking a nap, so uh, that's he does not get out unless the sun's out. Yeah, there is a, no way you could fit any bigger front sprocket on this thing than this. Uh, I mean, we we were like a couple thousandths away from that front pin there. So any changes that are going to have to be made with the gear ratio past this are going to have to be in the rear. Well, it definitely looks like we're going to have to take a few lengths out of this thing because uh, it's just a little bit too long for this application. We got this ground down enough now. There we go. Pop that off there. There we go. Okay. That feels a little too tight. About an inch of slack in this thing, and it looks like we're gonna end up right at the fourth notch back. Now we're just gonna lock down the jam nut, tighten this main axle nut, we'll be good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and replace this cotter pin because the other one had one broke leg, and it's hard to get around with one broke leg. It's nice to have that exhaust out of the way. So you don't have to deal with it. It's right in the way trying to do this work. How come you're always a, a little booger to get on there? Well, this has been draining now for a while and we've been pumping the shock up and down and there's just hardly any fluid in there at all. So I think we did have a fluid issue. I don't know how much this is gonna help our ride height and hitting the headers, but we're gonna fill it up with new fluid and see. I'm gonna have to take the handlebars off to get access to the, taking these caps loose. Get 
get out of the way. Now, one thing I want to do as well is I want to look at the springs that are in here and see how long they are. I wonder if somebody's cut these springs or if they're wore out and collapsed. Is this going to come out here and kill me? Is it going to hit me in the face? No, oh, nothing at all. So if I take this out, is it now going to kill me? Am I going to get hit in the face with this? Rooster says it's time to get up. Almost here. Okay. There you go. Nothing to worry about at all. Looks like there's another spring down in there. Yep. Wow. Incredible. Well, here's what we're working with in there. I'm not sure why it has two. I guess it looks to be two different spring rates. Maybe, uh, you know, technology. That's what it is. Science. But neither one of these springs appears to be cut it looks like a factory spring on top and bottom so that is not our issue there so i'm just gonna stick all this right back down in there i'm gonna pour some uh automatic transmission fluid down through this while the plug's out just to try to flush out since we it appears to have got some water in it. this bike must have sat outside for a while there you go i got a little bit more of that stuff out of there now we're just getting transmission fluid. Well, he's finally woke up out here. I went inside to get something to do the oil on these forks. We have, woo, right over it. All right, come on in. Ellie's already in here. Ralphie's awake now. Good morning, Ralphie. Good morning. You sleep well? Yeah. You ready to finally do some work? Yeah. So this thing's supposed to take about five ounces. Let me get the air of this thing and make sure we have the right amount. So we're going to have to do like two and a half of these. Ralphie, it's time for your shot. Okay, Ralphie. Okay. Yeah, just put it right down through the middle of the fork and then we gotta do another one and a half of those to get uh, five ounces in it. Oh, now, uh, according to what I read on the internet, um, Honda recommends, oh, okay. <laughs> Honda recommends uh, automatic transmission fluid, uh, but a lot of guys saying that if you run like a, like a 10 or 20 weight uh, motor oil, it makes it ride a little stiffer, a little better. So we're going with motor oil. Rocky, get, get down off the super coupe, please. Please get down off the super coupe. Come on, get down. Get down, you're gonna hurt it. All right, let's try not to spill any this time. Oh, I spilled it. Just go well, slow. I didn't, but I, I pushed uh, it too hard. Oh, you pushed it too hard again? No, I'm just doing this. <laughs> Is it at the top? No. No, I think it just takes time to, for it to drain it down. I think you probably just gotta go slow. Rocky, we're we gonna do this again. You trying to eat the tools? Eat your oh, he's licking the chain. oil off the chain. Quit. Why do you like oil so much? Do you feel like a doctor? Not at all. You don't feel like a doctor? No. I put some oil on this. You you always want to oil an O ring before you put it back together, or you you could pinch it. Um, so we're going to put this back together. We got our C-clip in there and we're going to tighten this back down. Well, now me and Ralph, you're going to do the other side here. Let's see if we have any oil on it. You hear it suck a bunch of air when we did that? Yeah. Let's take the top cap loose so he can get some air to drain. What you doing? Even when we pumping it, I'm not getting any fluid out of this one. It must have been completely dry. Since I'm not getting anything out of it, I'm going to pour some automatic transmission fluid in here just to flush it out to see if there's anything that might be pushed out of that thing. Trash or water or anything. Well, we're getting the transmission fluid, so I guess it had absolutely no fluid in it. We've got our plug put back in at the bottom of our shocks. Now, same process here. We're going to put our oil back in here and put the cap back on it new tachometer for this thing that just came in since this one's been laid down we can't have that but we're gonna unhook this cable thankfully our wires are already unhooked from taking the headlight out and uh we're gonna get this thing off here and get changed out wasn't too tight there so this thing is cable driven and uh that's how it works it's pretty neat it goes down to the looks like the camshaft on the top of the cylinder head so it's got a 12 millimeter nut Real simple. Man, I didn't realize how dented in it was. I think I'd seen this, but not that. 
I'm surprised this thing still works. So here's our used one, new to us one. Uh, you know, it's not perfect. I wasn't looking for perfect though anyway, but not killed, not beat up. So hopefully this thing will work good for us. Okay, I put some oil down in the uh, cable while we had it loose. We just put this thing back in here. Really simple to uh, change out this tack. I went ahead and took the speedometer cable down while we got easy access to it and uh, put some oil down through it as well. What does that little thing do, guys? Tell me in the comments. I don't know. Ralphie says we're gonna have to take. A... <laughs> Ralphie says we're gonna have to take a break because it's snowing out here, and he wants to have a snowball fight instead of oh, <laughs> instead of working on these old cars. <laughs> oh, that's great. Are you okay? Are you, are you, are you all right, Walmart? Yes. <laughs> you took a tumble, didn't you? Oh, oh. Don't hit him. Watch out, Ralphie. Ow. I didn't mean to. At least I warned you. Are you going to go again or are you done? No, I'm done. You're done? <laughs> That's a pretty rough place to sled. Are you guys ready to go in? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, quit. Why are y'all trying to take me out? I'm going this way. <laughs> well, now we've gave this uh, about four days to dry because you do not want to just go straight from primer to painting this thing. You want to give it time to cure. So now I'm going to trim black uh guide coat these and we're going to sand them down with 320 and then go back over with 600 and they'll be ready to paint so now that we got it sanded with 320 i got some 600 grit here and we're going to wet sand this thing one nice thing about wet sanding something is you don't have any dust when you wet sand it which is really nice. And uh, it tends to not clog up the sandpaper as bad too to wet sand something. Well, now it's time for the big one, the tank. I got a little bit of a run there on my second coat of primer. But we're gonna do the same here, sand it down with 320 and go over it with 600. You really want to use a sanding block when you're trying to get a run out. Not really a good idea to try to do it with the DA. You won't really get it right. Just use really light pressure. Well, here it is after I sanded it down with 600 grit just smooth as a baby's bottom. But uh, we're gonna dry this off. I'm gonna try to take this cap off here because uh, I don't wanna have to tape it up to paint it, but we should be good to go now. The only reason I didn't take this off sooner was I didn't wanna get a bunch of uh, sanding dust down inside the tank. Lastly here, I'm gonna take the, a gray scotch bright pad and sand in all these grooves where we can still see guide coat just to make sure we have everything sanded really good. So this is the point where I'm gonna hand it off to our paint shop because I used to be a painter, but that was about 15 years ago. And right now I don't even own a paint gun. So I'm gonna have to get on that, ain't I? Okay, we got it in the booth now. We're gonna clean it with wax and grease remover, mix our base coat and start spraying this stuff. So right now we're mixing the pearl coat. So this is a three stage color. It's uh, the paint coat is SPT Bikini Pearl Coat Metallic. It's a new Jeep color. But you get a base and then a pearl and then you clear coat it. This will be really transparent. There you go, there's the pearl coat. Here's everything that goes in the uh, base coat. It's got a bunch of different Oh, 
good. Now we're using a tack cloth to clean any kind of dirt and debris off here. Now we're going to put a coat of sealer over it. David did such a good job painting this thing. I think it's gonna look great out in the daylight. I'm gonna put these Honda emblems back on, but somebody has waxed this bike and got this white wax all in these little cracks in here. So I'm gonna take a little brush and get that stuff out of there. Oh man, look at that. Look how good that looks on there. I love the white with the color. I can't wait to get this back on the bike. Well, I'm just gonna end up gluing these back on because our pins are super fragile. One of them broke, one of them didn't. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue here and sit these things down on it. You'll never know it. The kids and wife have not seen the color that I painted the motorcycle. So why don't y'all come look at it? I knew, I, I knew Wawa would love I'm it. I'm officially in love with don't whatever motorcycle Don't touch it, don't touch it. Don't touch it. it may not be completely dry yet, so. That's nice. Wow, very good. I, I knew Wawa would love it. Yes, it's her color. Did you hear what Rafa said? What? You've never had something this fancy. I haven't, you're right. Not in your lifetime. Like, I mean, look at this car. Y'all know you will sense. never be able to touch it again. Yeah, you can't touch the motorcycle this now. This is the end. <laughs> All right, well, Rocky likes it too, and Granny, I guess. Right. Apparently, Pebbles is joining the crew of misfits that likes to get out all the time. She's hanging out with her dad today. Not a good thing. Well, we've moved all, all of our parts in here, and we're going to start sticking this stuff on the motorcycle. That guy over there is hanging out by the heater because he's a baby. So uh, I'm probably going to start by putting these side covers on, getting the exhaust back on it. Let's get to it. I put a little bit of oil on those grommets in there to try to help it go in there. I always worry I'm going to break this thing. What is the trick to this? Uh, finally got the rear one in. There we go. Okay, now we just got this little guy to go. And the other side had me thinking about them swear words. There we go. Maybe this one easier. Easier. Not bad. There, I got it. We're good. Okay, we got our cool scrambler exhaust. We'll have to see when we ride it if our fork uh, work actually helped us enough to get us to be able to ride it again. Uh, our spacers here are helping us 
with a side cover. Eventually, I'll probably buy the correct side cover for it. I honestly have not been able to source one yet. Dropping the tank back on it. I'm gonna put the new uh, pet cock on there now. The reason we're replacing this old one is the little filter guy was rotting off this and you probably can't tell it, but the seal back in there is totally shot. So it was starting to leak. It was just cheaper to get a whole new one. I'm trying to make that metal stick. It's super hot. Yeah. Okay. Here, here, here. Oh, you got it super hot for sure. This is the fuel crossover hose, but if you can't tell, it's absolutely full of rust out of that tank. So it was not getting fuel transferring from one side to the other. We got to get something to run through this thing. Yeah, the middle of it stopped up. All rust. Oh, we got on the fire. There we go. Probably at some point I'm going to take these fuel filters off here. I don't like how they look. I'm just using them right now to catch any trash that we may get from this tank uh, until we get a couple tanks of fuel run through it. Now where's the other pin? Can you get the little pin in the front one you think? I got mine. I won. I won. You can get that. You didn't know it was right. I definitely won. There you go. Oh, can't touch it. Oh, I'm scared to scratch it. This is why you don't fix last cars like this. <laughs> She's scared I'm gonna scratch something. I'm gonna have to get a punch to do that. No, baby. There you go. Yeah. All right, close it. We disconnected the battery for this one. I'm a little bit worried about this because somebody's been in here, my wife's family working in this thing, and I'm not really sure uh, oh, about some of these connections. Poke them in there. Yeah. I think we finally got it all through here. Golly, what a nightmare. I don't understand how this thing needs this much wiring. No, we don't, the nuts right here. This is the nut. Oh. All right, just put it through there. This is a nightmare. I uh, never expected to have this much wiring in a tiny motorcycle. Uh, a lot of this stuff is color coded, but some of it isn't uh, matching up. So I don't know what to do here, but Probably just gonna go watch Jeopardy for tonight. What do you think? Yeah. Jeopardy? Well, Pebbles decided to join us. She hasn't really got to come in the shop a whole lot lately. Look how much her color is changing. Hey, Pebbles, show them your face. She's getting uh, all this black on her face now, aren't you? Huh? Where you go? Well, she's definitely acting like her daddy climbing up on the car. Yeah. Probably should have paid more attention to this. Uh, I may have to go back and look at some of my video where I took it apart. Um, I expect to be able to plug everything back into the colors, but some of that in there, there's multiples of the same color, so maybe it doesn't matter, maybe it does. We're about to turn the key on and find out. We're gonna hook the battery back up and turn the key on. Does the blinker work? I oh, have a left blinker and a right blinker, so that still works correctly. Horn works. Ignition button works. Well, maybe we didn't mess up anything too bad. What about your brake lock? Brake lock? Good point. We have brake lock still. I think it works on this. Yeah, we still have brake locks. Well, maybe we didn't do too bad. Now I'm super nervous about putting fuel in it. I don't want to get it on the tank. We're putting 93 octane in it. This thing's got some compression. 
Do you think it'll start, Ralphie? Yeah, maybe. Probably. I think we hooked enough stuff up around. I don't know if the battery's up good. Our battery's not up enough. We're gonna have to leave this thing on the charger for a little bit because it doesn't have enough juice in the uh, battery to start the thing in our brand new battery here. Uh, we also don't have really enough fuel, so we we'll probably have to go to the gas station while this thing's charging. Right, Ralphie? Yeah. Well, Pebbles decided to ride with us. She wanted to get in the truck. What do you think, Pebbles? You better put your seatbelt on. $74 for 24 gallons. That's kind of expensive, right? Yeah. Already at 85 bucks. Crazy. Yeah. It's not as scary as it looks. Oh, you're going to get it. There you go. Good job, Pebbles. <laughs> go find your mama. So something we did up here, we've lost spark. I don't know if this wire here, it was cut. Uh, we had some wires that were just like barely dangling on in there, twisted together wires. So this will probably be fun to figure out. Here. This black with a white stripe wire was the one that had been cut or whatever. Well, I found another black with a white stripe and I plugged them in together, put a new end on this. So let's see if that makes any difference. Brand new battery's dead again. I don't know what it was. So I guess I'm gonna put this headlight back together. What are you doing? And that's gotta go underneath that lip right there. That has a lot of stuff to stick in there. I'm ready to get this thing out and ride it. Can we fit it out through our junk here, all our housework stuff? Get it past the turbo coop. Oh man, I've been wanting to see this thing out in the sunlight. Party. Yeah, I love the paint on it. I wish you guys could see it in person. But you might have seen some Jeeps around with this paint color on it. Do you love it, Ralphie? Yeah, a little glittery. Why'd you pick the glitter? It's you gotta have that glitter, glitter man. You gotta have that. Everybody wants that. Look at this thing, man. It's looking so much better. I mean, it still needs some work, you know, some things to be perfect, but I'm not really wanting perfect. I want it to look good. Doesn't have to be perfect, does it, Ralphie, no. for us? Never. None of your cars are perfect. That's really hurtful. Well, I think we've got her done. And uh, I'll give you a shot here with some angles on the sunlight. It looks really sharp. I really love the color. Uh, I really like how this thing has turned out. And really, there's only one thing left to do to this thing. It's to get her, get her cranked up. And even though it's winter time, even though we're going to freeze our butt off, we're going to try to take this thing out and, and drive it. That's what it's made to do. Yeah. <laughs> we're pretty cool now, okay? We've got our 71 model Honda here. Leather jackets firmly installed. Got our sunglasses. So we're going to get some helmets on, though, to ride it. Some gloves, maybe. We're gonna take her out on the highway system.
was still fun, right? Yeah. You liked it? I'll never go to get another cold. <laughs> <laughs> He's never rode on a motorcycle, especially in cold weather like that. But man, that was fun. Uh, and it's nice to have the thing riding right on the new casings, the new paint job. Got our new tack and everything. Mirrors now where we can see. Uh, definitely need better riding gear though, for sure, right? Yeah. How do your fingers feel? Um, I can't really feel them. <laughs> well, we've reached the end of another video. Time for some RC colas. And so, <laughs> did you get it all over your face and coat and everything? <laughs> That's the worst one yet, man. You better clean up. We got our Vianas too. They're great. Eat them. The new bourbon barbecue ones that we figured out are the my favorite personally. But you know, I think we've kind of reached the end of this bike unless we come up with something else that I can th can't think of right now. I really like uh, how it's turned out. I love the color. Are you that cold? Here, let's clean him up for just a second. Poor little guy. Oh man. It's like looking down the barrel of the fireworks. You got it straight in the face, didn't you? Yeah. Well, we got Ralphie cleaned up a little bit. You can check us out on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at SleeperDude88. We have a second channel, SleeperDude2. If you click on our username and then click on the store button, you can find all our merchandise we have for sale. Good girl, Ellie. You can also and click on our username and then click on the playlist button. It'll show you all our videos in order. And hey guys, please subscribe. Only like 14% of you do. Here, Ellie. Good girl. She's actually holding back a little bit nowadays. But we got like 15, 16 project vehicles nowadays. So uh, stay tuned. We got all kinds of videos coming for you guys. And Ellie's puppies are growing up. You have to check them out, right? They get a little bit older. Thanks for watching as always, guys. We'll see you later.